Welcome to Flagstaff, Arizona. Today, this adventure is taking us to the Nordic village here in Flagstaff, Arizona. This place is just so wonderful to visit, especially during winter. If you are craving some winter activities like snowshoeing or cross-country skiing, or if you just want to play in snow. It seems like they have some yurts out here as well that I'm guessing you could rent and stay in. That's what we were, were told by some other people on the trail. There are definitely a lot of people who are staying here. This is a beautiful place to be and for families and kids, it's definitely family friendly. And uh, we are out here today snowshoeing. It's one of the things that we love doing during winter time. Uh, they do have rentals for snowshoes and cross country skis together, right? Correct. So you can get to the visitor center, you can rent uh, the gear from there and you'll have to pay for your gear, but you'll also have to pay for a pass. Yeah, I think it came out to about 50 bucks for the two of us combined to both rent and get our pass. And uh, there's a dog trail here as well, where we see a lot of people taking their dogs out on jogs or walks and they're just on their cross country skis as well. So we'll take you around, we'll show you a little bit around here. There are a lot of uh, trails. Uh, some of them are multi-use, some of them are just, just for cross country skis. And uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video today. They have a pretty good system of trails here. Some of them are easy, moderate, and uh, I think we were told that the most elevation gain is 600 feet of climb, which is great if you never snowshoed or cross-country skied before and you want to give it a try. This is a good trail system to, to try and see if it's something that you'd like. They are closing today around 3, 3.30 p.m. and uh, we will have to return the rentals by then. So if you plan on spending the day here, it's a good idea to get in early so that you have as much time as you possibly can here. And uh, for us, we didn't show up until noon, but still a few hours and we're having a blast right here. I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer to the yurts and cabins out here to show you guys. I think that will make for a great stay. These are some of the yurts right behind me. I don't want to make a lot of noise in case people are sleeping or whatever. So there are a few of them right here. They have picnic tables. There's a bench right here, although it's pretty buried under snow. And they have a grill, which is pretty neat if you want to make your food out here. They look pretty small and compact, but if you're adventuring out here during weekend or a long weekend, that's all you need. It's just a place to, to crash and spend the night. I think that's it for us for today. We did enough snowshoeing and I'm gonna take off mine so that I can return them. And I will show you inside of the yurt right here just to see what it looks like inside if you are renting equipment from here. But if you have your own snowshoes or cross country skis, you just bring yours. <laughs> Double camera. Just returned the snowshoes over there and as you can see they've got a lot of equipment and rentals. Where do you want me to set the boots? You can just set them on the ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. They've got shoes for skiing. They've got cross-country skis. 
poles, everything that you need. So we just asked about the rentals for the yurts out here and it seems like they do have two types of yurts. Right, so they have large eight person yurts and then it seemed like the smaller ones were meant more for two to three people, you know, you and maybe your kid or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then they also said cabins as well, which um, I, she didn't describe them very much. The yurts though, way in the back country, do have their own wood sheds and their own porta potties. And yeah, so they said they, they're basically backcountry yurts. Uh, you have to drag your gear, whatever you need, on a sled to get to, to the yurt, or you can use some of their transportation vehicles, which... The snowmobiles, that they have. They call them shuttles for gear. Yeah, so the shuttle can take your gear up to the yurt, or there are front yurts, like the one I showed you earlier. And this is the one that you can access directly from your car. And for the for the front ones, for the front country, front country years, is that what she said? Yeah. Front country years, you can use the restrooms at the lodge. And then for those in the back country, they have portable parties. If you are interested in making a reservation, you can do it in their website. I'm going to walk you through it quickly right now. For all reservations at the village, you would want to go to Arizona NordicVillage.com. This is their official website. And here you can read about all of the events that they have going on. They have races, they have events, they have lessons. And this is where you can also rent a yurt or a cabin. They also rent their venue for large events like weddings. And you can read about all of that in the website. Now, for yurts and cabin reservations, we're gonna scroll down to where you see yurts and cabins, and I'm gonna go ahead and click book now. And that is going to take me to this page. Let's pick backcountry yurts, if that's what we want. And then you can see right here that there are a few options to choose from. Like we mentioned earlier, there are some yurts that can accommodate up to eight guests and some of them up to four guests. So let's go for this one right here as an example. And they have some photos where you can see what this yurt looks like from the inside as well. Okay, and then right here you can specify when you want to rent this yurt. Let's pick April eight to the tenth. You can see right here for one night it's forty dollars let's say we want this for two nights and there are a few details that you can read through right here to understand what are the things that you should be packing with you and some notes about the amenities and good etiquette and things like that so make sure to read through that and then let's go ahead and hit book and that is going to ask us for our contact information First name, last name, phone number, email, and from there you'll probably be asked about a payment method. So the booking process is pretty straightforward and if you are facing any complications, you can call or reach out to the Nordic Village to get some help. This is uh, the office where you would register and pay for your rentals before you grab them from the yurt over there and you pretty much just tell them what size of snowshoes you are and then enter your information, pay, get your pass. If you're wondering, that's that's the pass. You want to make sure that it's visible. Um, yeah, but uh, they also have, you know, they are selling a few things here, like socks, gloves, some snacks, coffee. Yeah, very nice view from right here. There's a little seating area. Oh, and I forgot restrooms that's very important <laughs> look at that they have a panini express we get some panini we're gonna go grab some paninis we were told that they are pretty good i just ordered the turkey pesto and i'm very excited to try getting a little hungry we just got our paninis and oh my god they are so delicious i got the, the turkey pesto and then Alex got a vegetarian one with spinach and mushrooms and mozzarella and oh Red my peppers. gosh, they're so great! Mm. These are delicious. I'm definitely getting one to go. This is the, the s'mores panini. <laughs> I didn't even know that a panini, s'mores panini is a thing. It is now. Is it good? Oh yeah. 
<laughs> Let me try a bite. It's got little graham crackers in it. That's what a s'more is supposed to taste like, huh? Mmm. So good. Mmm. <laughs> <Nom. laughs>